sound good? Look good? Uh, say your first and last name. Okay, my name is Frank Smith. Frank, F R A N K, Smith, S M I T H. All right, very good. All right, so tell me what year you were in Atlanta and what you did there and how old you were. Well, now let's see. I'm, uh, I was born in 1942. I went to college in 1959. So that makes me 17 years old when I enrolled at Morehouse uh, and uh, my freshman year. And I got involved in the civil rights movement at the end of my year, my freshman year. I got in rested in Atlanta, and then after, for the rest of my career there at Morehouse, I was active in the movement. At one point, I was the chairman of the Atlanta Civil Rights Movement. I succeeded uh, Charlie Black as the chairman of the Atlanta Committee on Appeal for Human Rights. Right, and where did you get arrested at? What, what was the circumstances? Well, I was arrested several times in Atlanta. I, the first time I remember being arrested was uh, in a demonstration at the Southern Bell Telephone Company. We went to an employment office there to try to get a job, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even let us fill out an application form. So. So we, they ended up arresting about 10 of us that day. And uh, then, you know, several times at the uh, Rich's Department Store and, and uh, a couple of other places there in Atlanta. And uh, in that famous one that uh, Julian Bond talks about when he arrested all of us at, at City Hall for trying to eat. And one time at Grady Hospital, which was very dramatic, quite honestly. It, was not, uh, well, not, well, it wasn't Grady Hospital, the hospital, the Atlanta Hospital. We were trying to integrate the hospital. And they wouldn't let us in, so we had to. Uh, and uh, Ruby Dara Smith was uh, she was really actually pretty sick. She actually permanent. That didn't do any good. They still put us in jail. <laughs> so, so it was a, it was a, it was, a, it was a, three years of really um, active uh, civil rights participation. And then uh, I uh, eventually withdrew from Morehouse College and went to Mississippi after we formed the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Right, and, and, I, and by 1962, I was in Mississippi. Part of the, um, the what is it, the Hurt Plaza, the March at Hurt Plaza. Uh, I don't remember that one. Uh, I, I remember. I, I, well, I don't remember that one. I, I remember. I don't. I don't remember the Hurt Plaza March. That's, that was. We, we probably didn't call it that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Or the. Um, let me see. They had on here the March to the Georgia State Capitol. That, that one I remember. I was arrested with that group. Yes, I was. All right, so let's go into that. So just <coughs> mention what it is, and let's go into that. Well, you know, the, uh, uh, the Atlanta University Center, this is true of most historical black colleges, they're located near to downtown. And by the way, just for the public to understand, most of those schools are surrounded by, uh, by, by public housing. So it's pretty easy for us to get a crowd up if we want to get a crowd up by going out and getting people in these projects. That's true at Fisk University. It's true at Howard. It's true at Morehouse. It's true at all these. Uh, these, these schools are surrounded, and they're also near the downtown. So you can walk downtown from the campus in about, you know, 40 minutes, and if you march downtown, you got a crowd by the time you get there. You start singing freedom songs, people, you know, people hang us on or get in the crowd with you and go with you, because, you know, they want to be free also. And uh, but, so by the time we got to the, to the state camp, we got a pretty good crowd of people. Now, they wouldn't all get arrested. I mean, most people are not going to go to jail with you they, they, unless they are committed. And, uh, but we had a group of students from the campus who were willing to go to jail. We knew before we went. Some of us were carrying toothbrushes with us. So, so we knew before we went down there we were going to be arrested because that was the policy of the government. And the only way we were going to change it was if we went in there and demonstrated that they, that they should be treating people better. And, uh, didn't, and, and uh, so we ended up in jail. And what did it feel like being a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, you know, being a part of this movement? You know, and getting arrested or possibly getting arrested or killed? Or well, you know, I'll tell you two things about it. One, uh, I, I was born in Noonan, Georgia, N-E-W-N-A-N, -E uh, Noonan, Georgia, which is just 30 miles south of Atlanta. We get the same newspapers in Noonan, and we get the same television station and everything. I was born on a plantation uh, that was owned by a man named Millard Farmer Sr. When I was, uh, so when I left college, I went off to school. My folks left my folks living on this plantation. So the first time I got arrested in Atlanta, they put all our names in the newspaper, and it put the name, your hometown in there, because they knew we were all from out of town. Well, a lot of us from out of town. And they put my name, and it said Frank Smith, Newland, Georgia. So my name is Frank Smith, Jr. My father's name is Senior. That's hard to miss. <laughs> so uh, my daddy told me that the man who owned this place called him in and asked him, what, what the heck was I doing? I was supposed to be up there at school, up there, you know, stirring up trouble. And so my daddy said, well, you know, uh, I'm not, uh, he said, look, he doesn't live here anymore. He's grown and gone. Uh, he doesn't live here, and I don't have any more control over him than you have over your children. So, uh, I, so I said, my daddy told me, I said, yeah, so you just threw me under the bus. You, told, 
denied me the first chance you got. You just told a man you didn't even, I, you know, I, I, I bet if I hadn't had your name, you probably would have said I wasn't your child. But So we had a good laugh about it. He said, well, look, I had seven other kids here. I had to get out of the house. You were gone. And uh, you were up there doing your, you know, whatever you do. And, uh, but uh, he, didn't get, he didn't get evicted and, uh, and actually was very supportive of me and what I did. I mean, he, he never volunteered to get me out of jail, but I, I'm sure if I had wanted to, he would have come and got me out. Then, um, so tell me how SNCC was different than CORE or SELC. Like what made SNCC unique, but hold on to that? And you, yeah, you put that light back on. 